Hi, my name is Mel, and this year at Brickworld uh, Chicago, I brought a few of my micro builds. Um, so my uh, beaches was built uh, at the end of last year, and it actually was uh, a pretty long project that I worked on. I started the houses months before and I had this idea of uh, creating pine trees out of the sand green horn from uh, Seasick Kitty but it's such a rare piece that there was just no way that I could acquire it. It just it, There was just no way of doing it. It only that. appears in like one... It's in only one set. So luckily um, through the magic of being in a lug um, I've been eventually um, able to acquire enough to be able to do to finish this project and so... A ludicrously effective like <laughs> like technique and just, just looking at that it's yeah I try to you know nowadays when I'm working in Microsoft I actually try to make my builds around a specific part so when I saw the sand green uh, horn I thought right away hey this is a great pine tree and I decided that um, along with the unikitty tails that look like ocean waves I, I thought that it'd be a really cool scene Kind of like in California where, you know, you're in the beach, you know, in on one Venice side, beach, like yeah, that. and yeah. you drive an hour and then all of a sudden you're in the woods or you're near, near snow or anything like that. And um, it is based off these houses in, in Toronto where I'm from called the beaches, um, but we don't have pine trees. And, well, we have pine trees in, in Canada, but we don't have palm trees. Um, so it is, it is solely inspired by those beautiful houses um but the the i think the highlight of the build is the the unikitty pieces that i've used and um you know anybody who's who's seen my work knows that i am a little bit obsessed with unikitty so taking you know the different parts that create the character and trying to find different ways with it is something that i uh, for some reason i just really like doing that is totally cool and, and so one of the things i'm always curious about is um like the minifigure tends to dictate the scale at which a lot of lego builders build at and so doing a micro scale build like this sort of breaks out of that what's like the one mindset that building a micro scale requires uh that you know maybe a, a person who typically does like a minifigure scale cafe corner type of mm -hmm. scale what's like the differentiating factor in your opinion uh, honestly, I'm, I'm so new to Microscale that I can't even say, like, <laughs> legitimately what what is what what mindset I'm in. Essentially, like I said, I I, I like base the picking apart, right? Yeah, like, yeah, like I base my build around a specific piece that I really like. Um, and so, you know, if if you look at my uh, Castle in the Sky, it's based on the floating city of Laputa. I actually. Um, looked at these gears these technic gears and i thought hey th that would be a really cool building um and then i've always loved castle in the sky and i and i i got this fun little uh display globe thing dome for, thing yeah for for my desk and i thought hey you know maybe this would be a fun uh build to do but it was based around a part that i originally looked at and said hey this this would be a cool part and and the same with my seasons like i i eventually took uh, the Unikitty tail and and um, I brought it into a, a smaller scale and then I also made it into um, like a waterfall and then I added certain features like minifigure hair yeah. like for for trees. clown hairs exactly yeah the clown hair and the Joker, Joker hair, hair and, awesome. and and so these honestly the these vignettes or these small scenes are inspired about a specific piece that I looked at and I saw hey this this actually would be a really cool micro version of um, of something you know that we would regularly build in minifigure minifigure scale and and I love exploring uh, micro scale because you don't need to have a very large collection in order to be able to build with it and that's what a lot of you know people who are getting into Lego community are worried about is that they need a large collection to make something that's that's fun and uh, the the reason why I, I love displaying these two is that you know we see a lot of kids who want to get into the Lego community but they're they're nervous about being able to you know make something fun with what they already have and this is just an example of of being able to create something with with a little amount of of uh, brick right definitely definitely and i love like sort of like thinking in the mindset of uh, that's a really cool piece like what can we do with that but what makes these scenes all so great is that uh, they sort of have like this um this really cool encapsulated like you know the, the whole scene is like it's in context kind of uh talk about that like formulating a scene like what, what's your process like um I try to 
I try to keep my builds within just a few hours. I really do it based on time. I don't have the attention span to spend too much time on something. Mm -hmm. And even my large builds actually give up and then I go back to it, you know, weeks or months later. And so I, I just start building with a small, um, you know, I'll try maybe uh, an eight by eight plate and then I'll build up from there if I think that it needs more detail. I think it's great to restrict yourself to a small scale if you want to challenge yourself as a builder because then you, you have to really think about how to place things so that they're not you know crowded or you're able to show this story or this scene um you know with the with the right parts sometimes people use too much and it it kind of the build gets lost in itself definitely mel very insightful thank you so much for sharing with us thank you so much awesome